I'm going to step out of your sight. Stand with me. And I want us to read this passage of Scripture together here, if we may. Where it's recorded. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Be seated, if you would, for just a moment. I want every word that comes out of my mouth. I want every word that comes out of every one of our mouths here this week. I want it to be found acceptable in God's sight. I want God to be, I want God to be honored with every step that we take. Because let's face it, folks, we are on a journey. When will our journey end? Only God knows. God holds that. We have families that almost weekly we have someone or some of our families, a loved one has gone on to heaven. I'll promise you that when, if, if our loved ones knows Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we don't have to stand here and wonder whether they're in heaven. They're in heaven because Jesus, what Jesus Christ has done, and they, Jesus has provided them the way. And I'll promise you that our loved ones, they have never been more alive and never have they been any more whole than they are when the day they enter heaven. Amen. They've never been more alive. And for that, folks, we can come in here and you and I ought to say every time we come into God's house, Lord, take every word that I say, give honor to you. Take the steps that I'm taking. Lord, let it, be, let it give honor and glory to you. So we are just so, it's such a privilege that God gives to us of being together in his house. So we've come today to worship him. So this day, it's the Lord's day. And I'm going to rejoice. And I'm going to be glad that I am here together with brothers and sisters in the Lord that I have known for many years. And I look forward to many more years of us knowing one another. And I look forward to eternity of you and I seeing one another and walking those golden streets in heaven forever. Forever. So may God bless you as we gather together to worship here this morning. We're glad to have each of those that are online. Thank you for your faithfulness throughout these, uh, uh, this year and a half or so of, uh, of how you have uh, stood alongside of this church and, our, and the ministry of our Lord. Thank you for being a part of it because you are a part of it. And for each of those that are here and those that are in the parking lot, we're grateful. So we're glad to have you here. Now we're going to begin our service in, in song here. Carolyn, come lead us.
worship by singing hymn number 189 in uh, the Lily of the Valley. <coughs> Deacon is Teddy Griffin, so well, I was just handed that here a moment ago. Thanks, sir. If you could give me the video, uh, Moses, here. Boys and girls, I want you to look and pay very close attention. Then we're going to have you to come up after you see the video. It's about a 50 seconds long, and you studied about this in Bible school, and I, 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 we searched for this last night and got this, this little video, and I want you to pay close attention to it. We're going to talk about it here in just a moment. Baxter, play that here. You already put it up. Oh, you've already put it up. Can you get it back out? Okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to give him a minute. This year is operating out of your shirt pocket. And that's okay. That's okay. Got your Bible and uh, turn with me. I'm going to, we're going to tie a little bit of this in. Uh, the first service I asked, uh, uh, we were in the book of Psalms. And I'm going to ask you to turn now. We're going to be back in Ephesians. Uh, here in just a little while, but I want you to turn to Psalms 19. And uh, I want you to, uh, we're going to begin reading here just uh, out of uh, uh, the ninth verse, Psalms 19. We're going to try to tie everything in here together. Uh, so here, to, uh, sounds good, and if your neighbor does not have his or her Bible, I'm reading out of King James. If you've got your laptop, smartphone, uh, whatever you've got there, that's fine, read uh, we want, to, we want you looking at God's word. Uh, it's so important, folks. This year's more valuable. In fact, David says this is more valuable than all the gold that you'll ever find. God's word is. Look with me here. I'm gonna, let me, uh, this will give me an opportunity. Baxter, you didn't know the Lord was working uh, there, there to give me an opportunity to read this scripture here again. Look with me at verse 9. The fear of the Lord is clean. Enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. 
Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is a great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Folks, let me stop right there for just a moment. This is what David and the Lord are talking. And David, David's asking the Lord, don't you let any sin or anything get to the place that it is, becomes the ruler of my life. Satan loves to take sins or things in our lives that are very contrary and go against what God's Word says. And we let them dominate our existence. David says, he says you're in the middle part here of verse 13. Let them not have dominion. And look what the next two words. What are those next two words, folks? Over me. Don't let these sins get to the place that they are uh, all-consuming. And there are many times that that becomes the case. That I shall be upright. I need to be standing where I need to be standing, and that is standing on none other than on Christ as that solid rock. And I shall be innocent from the great transgression. When I do things God's way, then I am going to be forgiven of my sins because I, I am living out my life, and my existence on this earth is being lived to such a point that I am living it God's way. Folks, there's no other way to live our lives than to do it the way that God has prescribed and God has laid before us in His Holy Word. He, it is truth. And that's the only truth that you and I will ever ascertain or find. In this world shall be God's Word. We read a little earlier as we began the service before we came, I think it was before we came online. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart let it be acceptable in thy silent sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. May God add his blessings to the reading of his rich and holy word. Baxter, do we have Moses up now? Yep, if you look at the screen, we do. <laughs> okay, if I look at the screen, Cindy said I can, duh. Hello, my name is Moses. My life started out a little strange. As a tiny baby, I was sent down the river in a reed basket saved my life. The Pharaoh's daughter rescued me and raised me as her own. I was educated as an Egyptian, though I was a Hebrew. I escaped into the desert after defending a fellow Hebrew man. Well there, God spoke to me from a burning bush. He told me to rescue his people. God used me to bring plagues on Egypt. I led God's people through the Red Sea saved them from the Egyptian army. Trusting God was not easy, but he used me to set his people free. I'm Moses, and this is my story. All right, boys and girls, if you'd like to come up, come up. Any of that like to come, I've got a special treat and bulletin here for you. Come up, and we'll let you go back and be with Mom and Dad. Here, if you'd like to come up. Don't be bashful. I promise I do not bite on Sunday. <laughs> Wait, this is Sunday, isn't it? Come right on over here, and I'll let you sit right over here. Wow, look at this good-looking group. Let's sit right over here so we can get a, a nice camera shot of you guys and put you up on the screen here, too. And the folks at home can see you, too, here. Good, good, good to see each of you. I hear in the Lord's house. Isn't it, isn't it good when we're able to come to church? Vacation Bible school. Did we study about Moses? We did, didn't we? And Moses was here. And Moses, when he was a baby, do you remember? I don't know that we talked about that in Bible school when he was a baby. Where did, where did his mother hide him? Yes. In the basket in the river. Uh-huh, in the river. Do you remember what river, the name of the river? It was N-I-L-E. Nile River. You see, you see, folks, if you ask the right question, you're going to get the right answer. That's where teachers go, they really do, do it the wrong way. You've got to ask the right question there. You're going to get the right answer. 
And you see, God had his hand on Moses' life all the time. But you know that God's hand is on each of your lives just as much so as, as it was on Moses? Do you know that God loves each person here? He loves you as much as he loved Moses? Think about that for a moment. God loves you. He cares for you. He cares for your mom and dad and grandpa and grandma. He loves you so very much. And as Moses grew up, and he grew up in, in a Pharaoh where the king of Egypt's uh, palace, and he had a lot of different things, but later he would recognize who he was and his heritage, and, and God was going to use him, free all of God's people out of Egypt, did a, a lot of tremendous miracles. In fact, one was he parted a, the, the Red Sea, and they walked on dry land, and, and just God rescued them and took care of them. You and I are serving the same God today. And he is our God. I hope that you're going to pray. If you're not praying every day to him, to our Lord, please do that, okay? Will you do that? If you're going to pray to the Lord every day this week, will you raise your hand? Raise your hand if you, if you promise that you're going to pray. Okay, I like that. Okay, parents, you saw them. Hey, they, they promise they're going to talk to the Lord every day this week. I want to talk to the Lord right now, and we're going to let you go back to your seats, okay? Pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that uh, for the recording of the life of Moses. Lord, how that from the very, uh, his time of coming to this earth, being born, you took care of him. And you had a purpose for him, and that purpose, uh, to begin with, mom and dad had no idea what that purpose was going to be. But, Father, you, you took care of it. And, Lord, you used him in such a mighty way to rescue hundreds of thousands of your children from Egypt. And, Lord, eventually you took the generation to follow them. You took them into that promised land that you had said was already was theirs. Lord, thank you for every boy and girl that's here, for those that came down, for those others that may be sitting out in the pew now, Lord, I thank you for each one. Bless us, Father, as we seek to be the church that these our young boys and girls need. Lord, take care of them. Watch after them. And Lord, may we help to establish them and teach them the truth of your word. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come by and let's get you a little treat here. You're so patient. Thank you. Thank you. Let's continue to worship by singing in the garden.
give the choir just a moment, and then we'll have Children's Church being dismissed right over here. If you'd like to use that ministry program. Appreciate that message and song. If you got your Bible, let me invite you to turn me to the book of Ephesians. I'm going to ask you to turn to, to the second chapter, not the third one here. And we're going to read verse 4 through 10. And if we have a little enough time, we'll go. I'll reserve the right and come back to Ephesians, the third chapter, a little bit later on here. You know, it's so important. David knew that the Lord needed to be in your life. Sweet Jesus, Lord, I need you. So true. It has resounded from the chambers of life throughout centuries of reminding us of just how important it is to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We never ever can uh, reach a point that I can ever say that something else is more valuable than sweet Jesus. Nothing. But yet, there are so many times I think that we get caught up in or confused or we fall victim to some of the trappings of Satan because keep in mind, Satan is a liar. He's a thief. He seeks to destroy and kill. He seeks to destroy our lives and our relationship with Jesus. He doesn't want us, you or any of us, to view Jesus in a, in, with such a, a, a manner of saying, sweet Jesus. He never intended and never wanted anything. In fact, Satan was hoping from the very beginning. You remember how he tried to, to uh, trap Jesus out there as Jesus went out in the wilderness to be tempted? All the things that Satan was offering Christ, hey, all the world was his already. It was already his. But yet, here Satan was trying to manipulate. And you know why Satan wanted to manipulate in such a fashion at that particular time? He knew what Jesus was, had come here for. He had come to make redemption possible. He had come to bring grace into yours and my life in which not deserving, not that we ever could have attained that, but given us that which God wanted to all the time and intended for us. But Satan wanted to stop Jesus. See, the Pharisees and scribes thought when they saw Jesus take his last breath and they heard him cry out, it's finished. And they saw his disciples and others asked for the body of Christ and they saw him laid in a tomb. That's the end. That settles this thing called Jesus of Nazareth. That impact that, that all these followers of his thought they were going to have on the world, not going to happen, so they thought. And they wanted to take a little uh, plan B and their plan B was seal the tomb, put some guards there, Folks, you cannot defy God. You cannot get around the fact that what Jesus Christ has given to us as generation after generation in forgiveness, salvation, grace, you're not going to find it anywhere else. We read as David a little while ago out of Psalms 19, and David reminded, as he was talking to the Lord, he was reminded. There's nothing sweeter. There's nothing. Gold cannot replace what Jesus Christ has done for each of us. 
So important, folks. Look with me here at Ephesians, the second chapter. Look with me at verse 4, if you would. I'm reading out of King James. Look at the scripture. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith with he loved us. Wow. We teach early on our children, uh, for God so loved the world. John 3, 16. Uh, we hope they learn that and it will carry them all the days of their life. Folks, it's important that we establish uh, uh, our little one's faith in Jesus Christ. It's important that the words of our Heavenly Father, which over and over again and again, the Word of God is referred to as truth. Folks, you're not going to find truth anywhere else in its perfect sense. There's nobody that has been perfect other than Jesus Christ. Many have tried to do away with the name of Jesus. Governments, principalities, powers. You know what? They, they never counted on and what the devil didn't count on that the more you try to persecute or to take away the name of Jesus, the more powerful the movement and the, and the belief becomes. We need to, as Americans today, we need to take a firm stand in Jesus Christ and nowhere else. Because His Word is something that you and I can bank on. In His Word is something that you and I can count on. In His Word is something that you and I can base our lives upon. And it will enrich us to such a degree that we can never imagine. That's what Jesus Christ's words will do for each and every one of us. If you and I will only hear Him. God would say as Jesus was being baptized, He would tell all those that were listening and would hear, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear Him. Those words ought to be echoed throughout the chambers of time till Jesus returns once again. Hear the words of Jesus. Hear what Jesus has to say. Look with me here at the fifth verse, if you would, as we continue reading here. Even when we were dead of sins. And rest assured, folks, when you and I give way to sin, there's a part of us that we're experiencing that death, and it's not a physical death that I'm talking about, it's a death with, from within that literally, folks, it shakes us to our foundation. It'll grab hold of you. That's why David was able to say, Lord, don't let the sin, my sins, ever have dominion in my life or get to where that is the controlling factor in my life. And now as we're seeing Paul write to the early church at Ephesus, he said, even when we were dead in sins, Lord, you have quickened us. What's that mean? It means that Jesus Christ, if you and I will look to Christ as the source of truth in our lives and in our existence, that Jesus Christ, he takes that which was lost. He takes that which was hopeless. He takes that in which that, that filth or dirt was within. And we were so uh, unclean. And he takes that, and because of what Jesus Christ offers to every man, woman, and child, he is saying, I will forgive you of all unrighteousness, and I will quicken you. I will bring you back from that which you thought that you had, you had slumped into, and rest assured, Satan loves for you and I to take the wrong path. He loves for you and I to make the wrong decision. But we've got to take, stand firm in the name of Jesus Christ. Look with me as we continue reading here in verse 5. Quicken us together with Christ. Look, folks, there's not going to be a change or transformation in anyone's life if Christ is not included in it. If you have somebody that tells you that they're, they're changed and their life's been transformed and they leave out Jesus Christ, folks, they lie. The truth's not in them as, as, 1 John, uh, as John says in 1 John. Truth's not in us. You, to be changed and transformed, it's got to come through Jesus. 
He's that transforming power. He's our hope. That's Jesus Christ. And look at the last phrase here. He says, by grace, are you what? You're saved by grace. Leon doesn't deserve uh, saving. Never was. Can't be. But all because Jesus Christ said so, He puts your name in my name, and He says, if you'll ask for my forgiveness, and you'll seek to know me, and you'll walk with me, He said, I'll forgive you. I'll give you a new life. I'll give you a new beginning. I'll show you really what my Father, how much, just how much my Father loves you. I mentioned the first service here today. I hope you've, you've looked and you saw that beautiful full moon this week. I hope you've, hope you've taken advantage of that and saw how beautiful it was. Lights up the whole sky at night. Uh, a beautiful sight. The creation that God has made for us. All for our enjoyment. Cindy and I were sitting out, and you know what I was doing out on the front porch of our house the other day? I had a glass bottle of sun drop and a lance cracker, and we were sitting out there, and we kind of phased out the traffic and hearing the birds sing. I don't think I've ever heard as many birds this year as I have. But you know what? One of the things that we, Cindy and I were reminded, this is what God has provided for every one of us to enjoy. If you haven't done that, I hope you're going to take time to sit out and to listen to what God has provided for every one of us. Folks, God loves you. He loves you immensely. More than, than all the gold in the world is so valuable to every one of us. Look with me as the scripture writer continues on. I know our time's going to get away. Look with me here in verse 6. And He hath raised us up together and made us sit together to heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Folks, I know that, and we've got people online here. Folks, online is not, it does not substitute being together, folks. And I've got, we've got people all over this auditorium that's shaking their head. There's something that, you know, we sang, choir sang a little bit ago about sweet Jesus. Listen, it brings us together in God's house as God's people, and we certainly indeed can enjoy the sweetness of knowing Christ. There's something about being together, folks. Now, I know that there are some that are listening. Your help, and there are reasons you simply, you cannot get into any building. That's okay. You use, utilize whatever source you can to stay close to Christ. And that's a beautiful thing. But if you can be in God's house, you need to be in God's house. We need to worship together. Listen as, now as we continue reading here, if we may. Look at verse 7. That in the ages to come, he might show his exceeding riches of his grace in the kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Folks, Christ continues to reveal himself to us. There's nothing sweeter than a newborn baby. We're going to have a baby dedication sometime in September. They, uh, our parents are trying to get together, and we're going to, we're going to have a date for you soon, and we're going, to, we're going to, I think we're going to dedicate seven, eight, nine, I'm not sure the number. We're going to have a dedication service. We're going to, and uh, there's nothing sweeter. For that is a gift from God, folks. Our grandchildren, grandparents, our, grand, our grandchildren not some of the sweetest things? Some of you got your grandchildren here today. Some of them may not be newborn babes, but they're, but the, hey, they're grown up. That's okay. It's a gift from God. What did God really want to do? He wanted you and I to realize what it means to be family. If there's been one core thing that in all these years that we've been privileged to serve this congregation, it is that we are a family. We don't let things uh, uh, whip us and take us out in the name of Jesus. We're family. And a family is that which is together worshiping the Lord, doing that which is called of God, and incidentally, throughout all this, everything that has gone on the last year, year and a half, listen, there are people that are still, uh, that, are, are, that are enjoying from the ministries of this congregation. We have not missed a beat in ministry. Folks, Satan cannot control what God, God's hand can do in his power and his presence. 
So God is with us, folks. And you and I, we need to be on board with Him. I need to be on target for Christ. I need to be sure that my life is where it ought to be and I am renewed by the grace of Jesus Christ and that wherever I'm walking and whatever I'm saying and whatever we're doing, that we're doing it in the name of Jesus, that Christ may be exalted. Why did we read there out of Psalms 19, verse, uh, verse 14? We read that. Why? Because every word that is uttered from your mouth and mine, it needs to give glory and honor to God. And that's what we come, and that's part of being the church. That's part of being the family. Oh, we're, we, we can be many families brought together in one. One in the Lord. One in the Lord Jesus Christ. Look with me as we go a little bit further here. That in the ages that come, in verse 7, he said that they might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Now look what he's doing. He says kindness. Then look at verse 8. We quote this many times. You do too. For by grace are you saved. Through what? Faith. For by the grace of Jesus Christ are you and I saved. By our faith. Now, over 2,000 years ago, the disciples and those others that were recipients of the direct miracles that came directly by the hand of Christ, they were eyewitnesses to what Jesus can do and will do and does do. You and I, we must believe in faith. We must accept Christ in faith. A little harder, yes, but let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is with us, and that Holy Spirit is part of God, just the same as Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus would even use the terminology. He, he told his disciples, he said, when I leave, when I go back to, to send back to be with my Father, you're going to do greater things. Why would Jesus be able to say that? Because the Holy Spirit was going to be able to set up a residency and a life within each of our lives. Sweet Jesus, for doing that very thing, for, for living in my life, and being willing to live in my life, that's a sweet Jesus, folks, when you and I realize that God has, is seeking to be so close to us that He sent his, a part of Him and the Holy Spirit to come and to take up residence in our lives. And, and as He takes up residence, He's there to help us. Last time I checked, folks, each of us need a lot of help. Is that true? Do you need help in this world? There's not a day that doesn't go by that I don't need the help of, 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 our, of our Lord. I need His grace. I need His protection. I need Jesus every day of my life. It's not a baby. It's an absolute Truth that I need Jesus Christ. Look with me here as we continue reading here for just a moment more. And look at the middle phrase here in verse 8. That not of yourselves. Don't ever think and get so such an attitude that you think, I got this, Lord. I can take care of it. There are a lot of people that are going to miss heaven because they thought they had this. You and I can never ever work hard enough, do enough to deserve heaven. In fact, you know what, you know what the scripture says? Salvation is the gift of God. It's not something I earn. It's not something I deserve. It's not something... That's, that's just out there that I can take it off the shelf and I can have it or not have it. Listen, folks. This is God's gift to us. It's a gift, but you and I must repent of our sins, ask for forgiveness, invite Him to come in, and folks, I'll promise you He will in no wise cast any of us out. Now look with me as we continue reading. We're going to close here in just a moment. Look at what he says in verse 9. It's not of works. And look what he says. Lest any man should boast. You ever heard that term braggart? Somebody that brags a lot? 
Listen, it might step on a, a lot of our toes because there are probably times in every one of our lives that maybe we've done that. That we bragged a little too much. You know, everything that's, that I've ever done, Billy Graham would tell you the very same thing. Any, everything that Billy Graham did, that, that did not assure him a place in heaven. Billy Graham did a lot of good I had the pleasure, Cindy and I had the pleasure of, of meeting, of, of seeing them, not knowing them on a personal level, but seeing them and, and shaking hands. Uh, and he'd tell you very quickly, the name Billy Graham. That didn't get me in heaven. What gets me into heaven is that a little boy that grew up on a dairy farm in Pineville, North Carolina, that got over, had to get up every day and was forced to get up every day and to go to the milk barn to milk those cows, not once but twice a day. He came to know Jesus Christ. That's what got Billy Graham into heaven. Billy Graham's in heaven today because Billy Graham made a decision to receive Christ as Lord and Savior, not what he did. Let me recount this in verse 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast. In other words, we might get a little attitude. You ever told some of your kids, hey, you're copping attitude with me? Stop it. wonder how many times God said, said that about to you and I, and maybe we didn't listen, or maybe we did listen, as God said, stop it. Do you hear yourself? Maybe the Holy Spirit's told us sometimes, do you, do you hear what you're saying? Do you hear what you, do you see what you're doing? Do you see how you're living? Could it be that God's saying to us this morning, hey, wake up. Wake up because Jesus Christ is there for you and to give you joy and to give you peace and to give you a satisfaction in life that you cannot find anywhere else. Look with me here in verse 10 as we close. For we are his workmanship. You look around this sanctuary here today. Every one of us are the workmanship of God. We can go in. I love that commercial. Oh, the phone commercial. The, the sister's talking to her sister. It's just had a baby. And, the, and then the, the signal goes, goes dead. And the, and, and, and the sister has got the awfulest looking face there. And, uh, and, and then she kind of shakes her head. Her internet's gone out and because it's kind of waffled there a little bit. And, and she made a big frown when she was looking at her new niece or nephew and said, this is not going to be good. This is not going to turn out good. As I look out over the sanctuary, God made us each one different, unique, special, and yes, beautiful. Every one of us. We're made in God's image. He loves us that much, folks. The hand, His hands upon us. Look, look at, as we continue reading verse 10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. And look what He says, unto what kind of works? Good works. God intends good things for every one of our, our lives. He wants us to do good things. He wants our children to do good things. And now notice the last phrase. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in Christ. All these things God has already set before us, folks. I think I put the title, Our Lives Are a Gift from God. They are. Every bit of that and even more. And our lives, we become accountable to God. And every one of us here today, we are accountable to our Heavenly Father for who we are and what we're about. Saved by grace. But still, folks, God, God knows. He knows our lives. He knows what we're capable of. He knows what we can do and what we cannot do. He knows what we're, our talents and He knows those things that He didn't put in. But God knows us and God loves us. And even as a sinner... Christ still was obedient and stayed there to go to the cross for us. 
Folks, that ought to speak volumes to every man, woman, and child here today in that Jesus Christ, while we yet were stayed in our sins and we refused to know God and to listen to God, and Jesus still stayed obedient to His Father, and He still he went to the cross. Don't think for, ever, for, for any moment that Roman, that the Roman government put Jesus to death. Jesus allowed that to happen. At any point during that crucifixion and but prior to it, Jesus could have stopped it. He had that power. Why did He stay on that cross? Why did He go to that cross? He went to the cross because in 2021, in our church and other churches across this land and world, He knew that men and women and boys and girls, they had no hope without Jesus. Jesus offers that hope to every one of us. Are you here this morning? Are you sure, first and foremost, that you are a child of His? That your life, that you have given your heart and life to Jesus Christ? If you're not sure, please do not leave this building until we talk and pray with you. It's an eternity of difference, folks. Most of us here this morning, I know you, I've known you, I know that there's no doubt that when you take that last breath on this earth, that you're going to be in heaven. And for that I rejoice, and for that I'm looking forward to that day of seeing every one of us in heaven. And that we're going to walk, and we're going to be at the throne of God, bowed down. And that we're going to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Are you here? This morning, do you need to rededicate or recommit your life? Will you come here this morning as Jesus leads you? Will you come just as you are here this morning? Stand with me as we sing. Not going to be a long invitation. Will you come? How about it, folks? Do you need Jesus every hour? You know, it's easy to say it doesn't matter. I'll pick up Jesus in a week from now or a year from now. That week or that year is not yours. Neither is it mine. It's our Heavenly Father's. You need to rededicate or recommit your life. This altar is open. Lunch will wait. Will you come as Jesus leads you here this day? Will you come? We're going to close this invitation in just a moment. Will you come? Just as you are, will you come? to be in God's house today, folks. Amen. He's a wonderful Savior, folks. A wonderful God that you and I serve, and He loves each of us dearly. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank You for this day, and I thank You, Lord, for the precious name of Jesus Christ and what Your Son, Jesus, did on our behalf. Lord, I'm so grateful, and we each one are eternally grateful for it. For without Christ, Lord, there would be no hope. There would be no ahead future for us. For the future would end when we took that last breath. But with Jesus, folks, Lord, I know, Father, I'm going to be in heaven with you. And Lord, you've got a place prepared for every one of your children. So Lord, I say thank you. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Watch after us. Take care of us as we go our separate ways. Put that hedge protection around us and keep us safe till once again we shall meet here in this, your house. For we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May God bless you. We'll see you next time.